The Magellan spacecraft, also referred to as the Venus Radar Mapper, was a 1,035 kg robotic space probe launched by NASA of the United States, on May 4, 1989, to map the surface of Venus by using synthetic aperture radar and to measure the planetary gravitational field. The Magellan probe was the first interplanetary mission to be launched from the Space Shuttle, the first one to use the inertial upper stage booster for launching, and the first spacecraft to test aerobraking as a method for circularizing its orbit. Magellan was the fifth successful NASA mission to Venus, and it ended an 11-year gap in U.S. interplanetary probe launches. History Beginning in the late 1970s, scientists pushed for a radar mapping mission to Venus. They first sought to construct a spacecraft named the Venus Orbiting Imaging Radar but it became clear that the mission would be beyond the budget constraints during the ensuing years. The VOIR mission was cancelled in 1982. A simplified radar mission proposal was recommended by the Solar System Exploration Committee, and this one was submitted and accepted as the Venus Radar Mapper Program in 1983. The proposal included a limited focus and a single primary scientific instrument. In 1985, the mission was renamed Magellan, in honor of the 16th-century Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, known for his exploration, mapping, and circumnavigation of the Earth. The objectives of the mission included Obtain near-global radar images of the Venusian surface with a resolution equivalent to optical imaging of 1.0 km per line pair, primary Obtain a near-global topographic map with 50 km spatial and 100 m vertical resolution. Obtain near-global gravity field data with 700 km resolution and 2 to 3 mg of accuracy. Develop an understanding of the geological structure of the planet, including its density distribution and dynamics. Topic. Spacecraft design The spacecraft was designed and built by the Martin Marietta Company, and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory JPL managed the mission for NASA. Elizabeth Bayer served as the program manager and Joseph Boyce served as the lead program scientist for the NASA headquarters. For JPL, Douglas Griffith served as the Magellan project manager and R. Stephen Saunders served as the lead project scientist. To save costs, most of the Magellan probe was made up of spare parts from various missions, including the Voyager program, Galileo, Ulysses, and Mariner 9. The main body of the spacecraft, a spare one from the Voyager missions, was a 10 sided aluminum bus, containing the computers, data recorders, and other subsystems. The spacecraft measured 6.4 meters tall and 4.6 meters in diameter. Overall, the spacecraft weighed 1,035 kilograms and carried 2,414 kilograms of propellant for a total mass of 3,449 kilograms. Topic: <laughs> Attitude control and propulsion. The spacecraft's attitude control orientation was designed to be three-axis stabilized, including during the firing of the Star 48B solid rocket motor SRM used to place it into orbit around Venus. Prior to Magellan, all spacecraft SRM firings had involved spinning spacecraft, which made control of the SRM a much easier task. In a typical spin mode, any unwanted forces related to SRM or nozzle misalignments are cancelled out. In the case of Magellan, the spacecraft design did not lend itself to spinning, so the resulting propulsion system design had to accommodate the challenging control issues with the large Star 48 BSRM. The Star 48 B, containing 2,014 kg of solid propellant, developed a thrust of approximately 89,000 N 20, lbf shortly after firing, therefore, even a zero. 5% SRM alignment error could generate side forces of 445 N 100 lbf. Final conservative estimates of worst case side forces resulted in the need for eight 445 N thrusters, two in each quadrant, located out on booms at the maximum radius that the Space Shuttle Orbiter Payload Bay would accommodate 4.4 meters or 14.5 feet diameter. The actual propulsion system design consisted of a total of 24 monopropellant hydrazine thrusters fed from a single 71 cm 28 in diameter titanium tank. The tank contained 133 kg of purified hydrazine. 
The design also included a pyrotechnically isolated external high-pressure tank with additional helium that could be connected to the main tank prior to the critical Venus orbit insertion burn to ensure maximum thrust from the 445N thrusters during the SRM firing. Other hardware regarding orientation of the spacecraft consists of a set of gyroscopes and a star scanner. Topic. Communications For communications, the spacecraft included a lightweight graphite, aluminum, 3.7-meter high-gain antenna left over from the Voyager program and a medium-gain antenna spare from the Mariner 9 mission. A low-gain antenna attached to the high-gain antenna, was also included for contingencies. When communicating with the deep space network, the spacecraft was able to simultaneously receive commands at 1.2 kilobits per second in the S-band and transmit data at 268.8 kilobits per second in the X-band. Topic. Power Magellan was powered by two square solar arrays, each measuring 2.5 meters across. Together, the arrays supplied 1,200 watts of power at the beginning of the mission. However, over the course of the mission the solar arrays gradually degraded due to frequent, extreme temperature changes. To power the spacecraft while occulted from the sun, twin 30 amp hour, 26 cell, nickel cadmium batteries were included. The batteries recharged as the spacecraft received direct sunlight. Topic. Computers and data processing The computing system on the spacecraft, partially modified equipment from the Galileo, included two ATAC-16 computers, as one redundant system, located in the Attitude Control subsystem, and four RCA-1802 microprocessors, as two redundant systems, to control the command and data subsystem CDs. The CDs was able to store commands for up to three days, and also to autonomously control the spacecraft if problems were to arise while mission operators were not in contact with the spacecraft. For storing the commands and recorded data, the spacecraft also included two muddy track digital tape recorders, able to store up to 225 megabytes of data until contact with the Earth was restored and the tapes were played back. Topic. Scientific instruments Thick and opaque, the atmosphere of Venus required a method beyond optical survey, to map the surface of the planet. The resolution of conventional radar depends entirely on the size of the antenna, which is greatly restricted by costs, physical constraints by launch vehicles and the complexity of maneuvering a large apparatus to provide high-resolution data. Magellan addressed this problem by using a method known as synthetic aperture, where a large antenna is imitated by processing the information gathered by ground computers. The Magellan High Gain Parabolic Antenna, oriented 28 degrees to 78 degrees to the right or left of nadir, emitted thousands of microwave pulses that passed through the clouds and to the surface of Venus, illuminating a swath of land. The radar system then recorded the brightness of each pulse as it reflected back off the side surfaces of rocks, cliffs, volcanoes and other geologic features, as a form of backscatter. To increase the imaging resolution, Magellan recorded a series of data bursts for a particular location during multiple instances called looks. Each look slightly overlapped the previous, returning slightly different information for the same location, as the spacecraft moved in orbit. After transmitting the data back to Earth, Doppler modeling was used to take the overlapping looks and combine them into a continuous, high-resolution image of the surface. Topic. Other science In addition to the radar data, Magellan collected several other types of scientific measurements. These included detailed measurements of the Venus gravitational field, measurements of the atmospheric density, and radio occultation data on the atmospheric profile. Topic. Gallery Topic. Mission profile 